Can you believe it? Another plane crash. On June 12, 2025, Air India Flight 171, a Boeing 787, crashed immediately after takeoff. It wasn't even in the air 60 seconds, leaving you and me to figure out what went wrong. How does a plane that takes off perfectly and looks textbook all of a sudden just start losing lift and hitting right back towards the ground again? Was it a maintenance issue? Was it a mechanical issue? Was it pilot error? Was it software? Or did Boeing just make another bad plane? Okay, so the problem is, is if you're watching this video right here and you've seen this video on the news, unfortunately, you're looking at the wrong version of this video because you're looking at a copy of the video and not the original. Now, all of the news media outlets were eager and quick to be the first ones to get these videos up this morning. So that's what they posted because that's what they had. But then later on, we got the original version of it. And it's this original version that I'm about to show you here that gives us clues into what might have happened to Air India Flight 171. On this Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner, right as it took off, something went wrong. What was it that went wrong? So let's take a look at these clues. Okay, so I'll show you what's wrong with this version. This is what they showed on CNN. See how you could tell it was shot off of a computer screen? And you can see the reflections on the screen. And you can hear people talking in the background. Now take a look at this newer version, which is appears to be the original video to me. It's a much clearer, and it starts a little bit sooner. And I want you to listen to the audio and tell me what you hear. So did you hear what I hear? See, this is what being an engineer is, is we always look for patterns. We hear things, we see things. And I heard something different here. So I'm going to play this very first part of it just as the plane flies by. I'll play it like three or four times in a row for you. And I want you to listen to the sound that it's making as it flies right by the screen. It's going to go zoom. Listen to the shape of that sound. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Boeing 787 jet liner that you heard flying by. But yet, didn't it almost sound a little bit like there was a prop plane? So that got me thinking, hmm. So it sounds to me like what we were hearing here is a ram air turbine, otherwise known as a rat. And I smell a rat, folks. Okay, what makes this so interesting is that the RAT deployment, it's automated and it's a normal safety feature of the 787. So in these twin engine jets like the 787, if both of your engines fail or if the aircraft loses some kind of major electrical or hydraulic pressure, the RAT comes out of its hiding there and it automatically deploys and it will then provide this emergency power that the plane needs to do whatever it has to do to, to land. And so in the 787, they store the ram air turbine behind a small panel that's on the wing fuselage. And so it's a spring-loaded mechanism that automatically just pops this thing out. And so this is what I thought you were hearing here is that buzz from the ram air turbine so i'm going to show you here this is a video clip from uh, japan airlines that was making an emergency landing one time and you'll see it deployed and let's take a look at it and you'll hear that same type of sound here i'll show you what it sounds like here is a japan airlines plane coming in for an emergency landing and you'll see it hanging down right here behind the rear wheels on the fuselage and it's just a little turbine fan and you'll hear it sound just like a small airplane with a propeller. So listen for it and I'll show you when it's coming. You'll see it spinning right there as the plane comes in. Here's another example of a 787 coming in at a Boeing test facility. And listen as it flies by, you'll hear it nice and crisp and clear too. It almost sounds like a drone.
Okay, so this video was shot off of a computer screen also, and you can see the person who shot it moving the mouse around. There goes the plane down the runway. And when it clears behind that checkered building there is about the point when it's going to rotate and take off. So you can see the nose is lifting up right around there. So there it goes. So far, everything looks smooth. I don't see any smoke, nothing burning. You can't really tell in this grainy video whether there's anything wrong with the plane. It gets up to about 600 feet or so right here. Now it's starting to go back down again. I can't tell if it's drifting over to the left or if it's just you know the angle and everything that this was shot at. But it is going right back down again here. So at some point, something went wrong there, and now it's going to crash back in there. And you don't actually see the plane hit. You just see a fireball off into the distance. And that was all that we had on this particular security camera video. Okay, so if we look here at the Flight Radar 24 data, it shows here, here's the takeoff. Uh, so first of all, the flight was supposed to leave Ahmedabad at uh, 1.10 p.m. and it ended up leaving at 1.38 p.m. There was some video circulating around from a passenger who was on an earlier flight earlier in the day who showed some video inside the plane and he said it was very hot in there like the AC wasn't working. So we don't know if that means anything or if that video uh, was even really from a passenger that was on it earlier. Sometimes people like to throw out fake data whenever there's a big incident like this. Okay, so it took off right here and it looks like their maximum height that they have here is about 625 feet with a ground speed of 174 knots, which seems to me to be right in the range of where you want to be for your V1 when you lift off. Now, whether there's other conditions that may degrade that number, uh, don't know at this time. There's not much to show, so it's just gonna be boom, boom there. <laughs> so there weren't any data points really to speak of. So in that previous video clip that I showed you of the plane taking off, the security camera must have been somewhere around over here along the left side of the runway so the plane takes off it goes airborne up to 625 feet and then starts to lose altitude and comes back down and it's going to crash right over here into the bj medical college so there's the flight direction right there came right over here and crashed into one of the buildings over in here and then there at the scene there was just numerous fires being put out everywhere and there seemed to be like hundreds and hundreds of people showing up there to help out. So it was just pandemonium everywhere. Uh, but at least it happened at a medical college where there's help right there. And when you look at all of these photos of like the damage and what happened to these buildings, look at that. There's some of your landing gear inside the building. And then here's uh, looks like the rear end of the plane. It's hard to tell from that shot. That looks like the tail. And then right here, it looks like the rear end of the plane sitting on top of the building. And then you're going to see an aerial view of that same thing. So, man, this plane just got torn apart. And you would think nobody would survive this. But actually, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at Mr. Ramesh Vishwash Kumar. And I hope I pronounced his name right. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I think he's about 45 years old. And he was a passenger in seat 11A, according to the news. Now, he says... He jumped out of the plane, but I don't think that really happened. I think the plane crashed and fell apart, and then he jumped out of the wreckage. And so here the news has released photos of him in the hospital. And there below his picture is a photograph of his actual boarding pass showing seat 11A. So if we look at the floor plan of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner here from Flight 171 of India Airlines... You can see, according to the ticket that he had there in the picture, if everything is correct, he was sitting here in seat 11A, which looks like that upgraded business class section. Yeah, he was in the last row of it. I still don't see how you would survive like this, because these are the wings here, and the fuel tanks are here. And so this would be the maximum point of the explosion, I would think, on a, on a fully loaded plane that just took off. So it must be just a pure miracle of God that, you know, somehow maybe this wing tore off a little bit and left a hole for him to jump out. Now, there might be some problems in translation and communication and language barriers and all that, but 
the stories that I've seen so far say that he claimed he jumped out of the plane. Now, I don't think that means he jumped out of the plane before it crashed. There's no way you would survive anything like that. I think what he was saying was that the plane crashed and it broke apart into pieces and he then jumped out of it. Now, going back to the security cam video here, as it goes up, you know, you don't see any sign of a problem here. But they must have known there was something wrong. So probably right around here is when they issued the Mayday. We do know that they issued a Mayday call. And then it started to drop down right here. So they must have known as soon as they took off that probably there wasn't enough power. So that's why I think either both engines weren't thrusting hard enough or maybe they were dying or there was an electrical problem. And that's why the RAM deployed. On nearly all plane crash videos, People will always look at this and say, you know what? I don't see that the flaps were set, so it couldn't have gotten airborne. Well, you know, on these grainy videos, it is fairly hard to tell you know, whether the flaps are set properly or not. So we simply don't know about that part at this point. But we do know that the U.S. is sending somebody from the NTSB to help them out. So, you know, the NTSB is experts. They are experts at reading data out of cockpit flight recorder so hopefully they'll be able to recover those and find out what was going on and see what inputs were coming into the computer now i know a lot of people like to come down on boeing because of all of the previous crashes but you know what the dreamliner here has a great track record it's a very very safe airplane it's been around since about 2011 or so and i believe there's about 1100 of these flying around the world and they've never had like a, a major crash like this and they've certainly never suffered a hull loss at all either so i think you could write this off as an extremely safe plane and whatever happened here must be some kind of a one-off was it a maintenance issue you know, it just really seems to me like they didn't have enough thrust because nothing else was going wrong. They didn't tilt the plane too much and stall out. The plane stayed level right to the very end. So it looks like these pilots were doing a great job trying to control whatever they could with it. It doesn't matter what your ground speed is either, because once you get up in the air there, if you don't have that thrust, the speed doesn't matter. It's going to just come right back down. And then just checking the stock market on Boeing on their stock price, it did have an effect on the price. You can see it right here, fell off like a cliff overnight. And so the stock is down almost $10 today as a result of the plane crash. The stock price could drop even more if more bad news comes out, like another design flaw from Boeing. But I doubt that will be the case. So that's my hypothesis on this crash so far. And of course, as more details emerge, will probably end up changing that hypothesis. And if you haven't seen my videos on the Philly medical jet crash from a couple of months ago, make sure you check this one out here. And a real detailed one here is the one you want to see here on the Boca Raton plane crash, because that happened in my area. And I actually went to the scene of the crash there and showed you a lot more details of what was going on. So thank you for joining us and stay tuned and we'll see all of you on the next one.